So a crucial and fundamental skill in solving force problems is simply being able to identify and draw the correct direction of all the forces present in the problem. You wouldn't believe how many times students screw up simply not because they're calculating wrong, but because they didn't even identify what forces are present in the problem. So there's a, there's a diagram physicists use because this is so important. They're called free body diagrams or force diagrams. In other words, what I'm saying is, say you had some situation or situations, we're going to go through a bunch. We're just going to identify all the forces and draw them in what's called a free body diagram. Or sometimes informally, this is just known as a force diagram. Why are we going to do this? Because if you can't identify the forces on an object, you're never going to be able to calculate the acceleration of that object. So let's go through a bunch of examples, and let's not solve and get lost in the math. Let's just make sure we can correctly identify all the forces and the directions of those forces. So how do you draw a free body diagram? So the first thing we do is we draw a dot, and this dot is going to represent the object in the problem. So for instance, let's say this dot represents for this one, this box that's sitting at rest on a table. What forces are on this box? Most people are okay with knowing that there's a downward force of gravity. So if you're near Earth, Earth will pull you toward the center of the Earth, which is downward in this case, but that can't be it. If that was it, this box would be accelerating downward because there'd be an imbalanced force. So if it's sitting at rest, we know the forces have to be balanced because there's no acceleration. So there's gotta be a force on that box upward. What's providing that force on the box? Well, it's the table. So this surface of the table underneath the box is pushing up on the box, preventing it from falling. So the table compresses a little bit, bends imperceptibly, and tries to restore itself back to its original shape, and that pushes up on the box. What do we call this? This is a normal force. So the normal force is the force exerted by a surface on another surface. So the surface of the table is exerting a force on the bottom of the surface of this box, and that's called a normal force. Why normal? Well, in math class, normal means perpendicular. So this force is perpendicular. When two surfaces push on each other through a normal force, that force is perpendicular to the surface exerting the force. And these have to be equal in magnitude because they're canceling on this box and it has no acceleration. What would be another example? Well, let's say it's not just sitting at rest on a table. Let's say it's sitting in an elevator while the elevator is moving downward and speeding up. So this, you're in an elevator, maybe you're at the top floor, you get in the elevator, you hit bottom floor, you start to accelerate downward. So if I'm accelerating downward in here, what would the force diagram look like? Well, we draw a dot, so the free body diagram, here's our dot, I'm gonna draw forces on this box. Is there gravity? Yeah, there's always gravity. So force of gravity straight down, that's always there. What else is there? You might wanna say there's a elevator force downward because you're moving down, but that's not true. Look at, where's the surface? exerting the force on this box, it's underneath. What do surfaces do? They push. All they can do is push. These surfaces will not pull on you. I mean, we're assuming there's not, not like a sticky tape or something underneath. So this surface is just gonna be push, pushing up on you, again pushing up. It's not gonna look exactly the same though, because you're moving down and speeding up. So this time, there's acceleration downward. If there's acceleration, there's an imbalance in the force. If I've got a downward acceleration, I need an imbalance of force downward. So there's still a normal force. There's still a force up from the ground on this box. Normal force up. But it's going to be less than the force of gravity because this imbalance in force causes an acceleration down. But those are the only two forces. Sometimes people want to add another force like elevator force up or maybe elevator force down but the only part of the elevator touching the box is the floor. And the only force this floor is gonna be exerting right here is normal force, and that's perpendicular and pushing. So surfaces don't pull on objects in this sense. They push on them, and this normal force is gonna go up. Why does this accelerate down? Because the gravity's bigger than the normal force, and that's why you feel a little bit weightless when you start to go down in an elevator. Your normal force becomes a little smaller, and you notice that, like in your belly. You might get these butterflies in your belly. All right, so what are some other situations where you have to draw force diagrams? Let's say maybe the surface isn't underneath you. If the surface is underneath, normal force always goes straight up. But what if the surface is above? Let's say you're pushing a box into the ceiling of a room. Why are you doing this? I don't know, to demonstrate Newton's laws, I guess. Uh, you're pushing it up with a force FA. 
And the box isn't moving. You're just pushing it into the ceiling of the roof for some reason. That's how I spend my Saturday. All right, so let's draw a dot. This dot's going to represent this box. What's one force on that box? Well, we're pushing it upward. So there's the force we're exerting, FA. A, why did I call it A? I don't know, just because it had to call it something. FA. It's the first force in the problem, A. What's another force on this box? Well, there's the downward force of gravity on this box. Force of gravity down. Is there going to be another force? Yeah, look, we've got two surfaces touching. When two surfaces push on each other, there's going to be a normal force. Which way is that normal force going to go? A lot of people want to draw it going up. But nah, -uh. surfaces don't pull on objects. Surfaces push on objects. This ceiling is going to keep the box from breaking through the ceiling. So it's going to push down to keep this box out of the ceiling. In other words, this normal force also pushes down, just like gravity. And people don't like this. They're like, what? I thought normal force was always up. Well, it's always up if the surface is underneath, because pushing would mean pushing up. But if the surface is above, pushing, which is what normal forces do, means down. So the normal force would be down. And that makes sense. Look at We've got normal force down, gravity down. I drew this FA bigger because I knew if the box is not moving, the forces have to be balanced. So in this example, FA has to equal the sum of FN and FG together so that all the upward force cancels the downward force and there's no vertical acceleration since we have a balanced situation with no acceleration here. What's another example? Let's say the surface isn't above the box. Let's say the surface is to the side of the box. So let's say you were pushing, again, why? I don't know. A person's pushing a box into a frictionless wall of a room with a force FA. And they're pushing at this angle. And the box is moving up the wall with a constant speed. All right, so now where's the surface? It's to the right. So which way is this normal force going to be? If my surface is to the right of the box, only thing normal force can do is push. So the normal force is going to be pushing left, keeping the box from breaking through the wall. Let's draw all the forces. So we draw a dot. One force is the force of gravity. That's going to be straight down. So you always got gravity. That's nice. Uh, in class, if your professor or teacher is like, what, what's one of the forces on this object? You want to be first in there, man, because you'd be like, force of gravity, straight down. They're going to be like, yes. If you're like third in line, you're going to be like, oh, man, i got to think of a good force now. Can't Gravity probably already got used up by then. All right, what's another force on this box? Well, FA, I'm pushing this way. So I'm gonna draw my FA something like this. So that's the force I'm pushing with. Are there any other forces? Yeah, we just said there's a surface to the right of the box and you're pushing to the right. So the normal force has to be to the left. If surfaces push, this normal force points leftward now. So if the surface is to the right, the surface is gonna push on the object to the left. Is that it? I think that's going to be it. The wall's frictionless, so there's no friction. What can we say about the forces? Well, this component of force to the right of FA, so this part of the force that I'm pushing at the diagonal angle with, this part here has to equal the normal force so the box doesn't accelerate through the wall. There's got to be no acceleration horizontally, so these horizontal forces balance. What about vertically? It means that this vertical force, this component of FA, vertical component, has to equal the force of gravity so the box doesn't accelerate vertically. We know it's moving up the wall with constant speed. Sometimes people think, oh, it's moving up. The upward force is bigger. Only if it's got upward acceleration. If it's moving up with constant speed, these vertical forces have to cancel because otherwise it'd be accelerating vertically. So what are some other situations? Let's just look at them. Let's say you had this. Let's say you did have friction. What if the surface isn't uh, perfectly smooth? Let's say there is friction. Then what would happen? So let's say you're pushing a box into a ceiling of a room at an angle with a force FA and the box is moving to the right with constant speed. You might be like, how do we know there's friction? Well, let's just look at this. Let's draw the free body diagram. Just by what this says, we know there's got to be friction and I'll show you why. What's one force on the box? Yep, gravity. Gravity always goes straight down. So we got force of gravity down. What's another force? Well, we've got this FA force. Notice I'm always drawing the forces coming out of the dot. You might be like, why don't I draw that force going this way? It's just a convention. It keeps things clean. Even if you're pushing on an object, never draw the arrow going into the dot. We draw all forces coming out of the dot. It keeps things clean, and it's just the convention everyone uses. So this is FA. Uh, what's another force on this box? Well, our surface is above it, so our normal force is down. So we've got a normal force downward, just like gravity. I'm going to draw it small because I know these vertical components have to cancel. So I've got a horizontal component of FA and a vertical component of FA. 
Uh, I didn't draw this very well. This vertical component of FA should cancel with gravity and normal. These downward forces look a little bigger. So I should have drawn it so that this vertical component of FA is the same as FG and FN added together. And then how do we know there's friction? Because it says the box is moving with constant speed. This FA has a component of force to the right. If that was it, it would accelerate to the right. There's got to be a force to the left that cancels that rightward force. What could that be? That's going to be the force of friction. So the force of friction is also exerted by surfaces, but the force of friction is not perpendicular. That's the force the surface exerts perpendicular, and that's the normal force. The force of friction is the force a surface exerts that's parallel to the surface and opposite in direction to the motion if this thing is sliding across the surface, right, across a rough surface. This friction is going to oppose that sliding, and it's always going to oppose the sliding. So in this case, if it's sliding to the right, that force of friction is to the left. Technically, this is kinetic friction because it's sliding and not staying gripped to the surface, but it's a force of friction, and it would point left. So surfaces can exert two forces. The perpendicular force a surface exerts is normal. It always pushes. And the parallel to the surface, that is, the force that's parallel to the surface that the surface exerts is called friction. And it can point in, well, it always points in the direction that tries to reduce the sliding. So in this case, it's going to be left. What's another example? Well, let's say you have this one. Let's say a person exerts a force FA on a box, and that it's on a rough table. We know there's going to be friction. It causes the box to slide horizontally across the surface of the table. So we'll draw a dot. This is our box. What's one force? Yep, gravity, straight down. So we got gravity down. We've got FA is going to go this way, something like this. Which way is the normal force? Well, our surface is below, so it pushes up. So our normal force is going to go upward. I'm going to make it kind of small because I know, again, I drew this a little sloppy. I've got a horizontal component here, a vertical component here. This vertical component of FA and the normal force together have to add up to the force of gravity. So I don't want to draw this normal force too big or else it would be absurd. These would have to add up to something bigger. We know there's no acceleration vertically, so the vertical forces have to cancel. How about horizontally? It's sliding across the table. It's not clear. It says it's a rough table. So the friction could be equal to this horizontal component. And if it were equal to, friction is going to go left because it opposes the sliding. If it's equal to this horizontal component, then the box would move with constant speed. If it were less than this horizontal component of FA, it would speed up to the right if it were already moving right. And if it were greater than this FA, if the friction were greater than that force of FA to the right, then it would be slowing down to the right. Since it doesn't say, we don't know, but we know there's going to be some friction to the left. What are some other examples? Few more. Let's do a couple more. What if you're on an incline? This gets a little weird. A box is accelerating down a frictionless incline. So you're on a ramp. We'll draw a dot. People get confused. Now they're like, whoa, maybe gravity points this way or something. No, no, no. You never fool gravity. Gravity's always straight down. So you got a force of gravity straight down. The Earth never gets fooled. Uh, what else do you have? Well, you've got two surfaces. Where's the surface now? It's below the box, but it's kind of at this angle. And we know the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. So to be perpendicular to the surface, now I've got to exert a normal force this way. And do I have any other forces? Well, I'd have friction if it was a rough incline. I'd have friction backward, but I don't have any friction because it's frictionless. So this is it. These are the only forces. How does it accelerate? Well, these are not balanced. There's going to be an imbalance of force that technically will go down the ramp. So if you were to add these two forces, they would add up to a force down the ramp because the perpendicular components are going to cancel. The box doesn't fly off the incline, it just accelerates down the incline, and these are the only forces involved. What if the box were sliding down a rough incline? So rough incline now, that means there's friction, at constant speed. Well, now there's going to be, yes, normal force, yes, gravity, but there's also going to be a component of force back along the incline trying to resist the sliding motion. So I just have to add, I'll just move this down here, same diagram so far, gravity, normal force. It's just now there would be a component of friction, or sorry, there would be a force of friction parallel to the incline, parallel to the surface of the incline, and it would point back up the ramp, and your force diagram would look something like this. We'll do two more. What if you didn't have normal force? What if you had tension? In other words, the force exerted by a rope. So let's say there was a rope exerting a force on an object. What would that look like? Well, let's say a box is hanging from the ceiling, 
in an elevator and the elevator is moving up with constant velocity. So you hang a box from an elevator. Why? I don't know, but you see this in physics books. And the box is getting pulled up by the rope in this elevator. It's moving up with constant velocity. So what's one force on this box? Well, you've always got the force of gravity straight down. So force of gravity down. What's another force? People get so used to drawing normal forces, they're like normal force. But there's no normal force here on this box. Why? Because there's no surface below it pushing on it. There's no surface to the left pushing right. There's no surface to the right pushing left. There's no surface above pushing down. The only thing connected to this box is this rope. And the rope exerts a force of tension. Not a normal force, but a force of tension. Which way does that point? Never draw the tension pushing. Tensions only pull. So surfaces can only push. Normal forces are always pushing forces. Tension forces are only pulling forces. This rope can only pull on the box. If you don't believe me, tie a rope to something and go try to push on it. And you'll be like, oh yeah, that doesn't work. You can only pull with a rope. You can't really push with a rope. Unless it were a really stiff rope. And that's not. then it's not really a rope. It's like a pole. So let's see. Which way would this force be? You'd have tension upward. How big should it be? It's moving up with constant velocity. A lot of people want to be like, oh, it's moving up. So this upward force wins. Nah, that would mean it's accelerating upward. If it's moving up with constant velocity, there's no acceleration. So this tension force, you can call it capital T, or you can call it F sub T. Tension is going to equal the force of gravity, and it's going to point upward to be moving at constant velocity. If it were accelerating upward, then you'd need tension greater than gravity. So that you might be like, all right, that's not too hard. That's easy. Well, let's look at a problem that's a little harder. Last one. Say a box is hanging from the ceiling in a train, and this train's accelerating to the right. But you've tied it to a string that's connected to the ceiling, and this angle's remaining constant, so this train is accelerating with a great acceleration forward. It's getting up to speed, and you see this box just hanging there at this angle. The whole thing is accelerating with the train to the right. What forces are there? Well, you've still got the force of gravity straight down. You're going to have a tension force because there's a rope connected to the string. Which way is it going to go? People get confused sometimes. They're like, maybe the rope's like exerting a force that way. But that would be a rope pushing on the object. That's not right. This rope's got a pull on the object. So there's going to be a tension force this way. Force of tension. Any other forces? People really want to draw a force to the left. But there isn't. I'll show you why. People think, okay, there's this component of tension this way. So the dashed lines are not new forces. These are just components of this tension force. The tension force pulls right, and it pulls up. The upward force is just balanced by the force of gravity, because we know this box doesn't accelerate up or down. But people get bothered by this component. They're like, wait a minute, that's not balanced by anything. This box would have to be accelerating. Wouldn't it just like hit the wall? No, it's OK. The forces are not balanced here, because the train and everything in it are all accelerating to the right. This part of the train accelerates right. This string part of the string here accelerates right. The box is accelerating to the right. Everything in here is accelerating to the right. So there needs to be an imbalance of force on everything in here, including the box. That's why it's okay to have this unbalanced part of the force, because there really is acceleration in that direction. It's got to be caused by something. It would be caused by this component of the tension that way. So there, there is no force that direction. It hangs back there because it was trying to remain at rest, and then the string's like, nope, you're coming with me. And there's only a force of tension up and right and a force of gravity down. So hopefully that shows you some of the forces you might see and some of the scenarios you might have to calculate, and hopefully that gives you a better idea of which direction these forces go so that when you do plug into Newton's second law, either written like this or written like this, you can have a better shot of identifying all the forces that you would put in here and identifying which direction they go so that you know whether they're positive or negative or included or not included so you don't have any phantom forces that don't belong in there.